Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Creative Mornings Muscat virtual session. It's insane to think that it was exactly one year ago that we started our first Zoom sessions. And let me tell you, I've learned a lot about Zoom in the last year. Um, I remember how confusing, how messy our very first Zoom event was. None of us knew what we were doing. We were just going, rolling with the dice, and I can't believe it's been over a year now uh, since our first virtual session. Before we get started, I just want to say that we really, really want you guys to interact with us um, throughout the session. And there are three ways you can interact with us. The first way is by turning on your camera. We would love to see your lovely morning faces. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't judge here. So take this time if you want, if you feel comfortable enough to open your camera, we'd love to see you uh, interact with us through the camera. Uh, the second way is by using the raise hand. We will have a Q&A at the end of the session and you can click on raise hand uh, so you can ask your question, uh, open your microphone and ask your question. And the third way is through the chat. We are following along the chat throughout the whole event. So if you have any questions, comments, um, anything you wanna say, feel free to do that in the chat. Since this has been a year uh, since we started our Zoom journey, um, I'd like to play a game that we first played, the icebreaker game that we first played when we first started Zoom. A lot of us didn't know what Zoom was or how to use it. So I'll ex I'm sure all of you know how to click on the raise hand, but I'll explain. If you go to participants, if you click on the bottom participants, you'll see a cute little blue hand uh, with, a, <laughs> with a sign that says raise hand under it. I'm going to read out a statement. If this statement applies to you, you can click on the raise hand. It's just a fun way for us to get to know each other and to get to know this Zoom platform. OK, are you guys ready? OK, let's get started. The first statement, raise your hand if breakfast is your favorite meal of the day. Let's see how many morning birds, early birds do we have here? OK. I don't know why I expected more. It's less than half of, or OK, OK, I'm going to give people time. OK. Just a, just a quarter, really? A quarter of the group today? Early birds? OK, well, the rest of you, congratulations for waking up early. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Uh, OK, everyone who raised their hand can now lower their hands. Thank you. Uh, the next statement, raise your hand if you are a midnight snack person. So I'm assuming anyone who isn't a morning person is a midnight snack person. I don't know. It depends. Uh, I guess it depends. Let's see. Okay, so, so seven, <laughs> okay, eight. If there's, so if you're not a, a morning person and if you're not a midnight snack person, what are you? Is there an in-between? I don't know. It doesn't feel like there should be. <laughs> okay, thank you to those who raise, uh, raise their hands. You can put down, you can lower your hand now. The next statement, Raise your hand if you are still in your PJs. So I'm gonna assume anyone who doesn't have their <laughs> cameras turned on, it's because they're still wearing their pajamas. Yep, yep, <laughs> most, of the, most of the people, wow, yeah, wow. <laughs> we don't judge, we appreciate you taking the time anyway to join us in your, um, <laughs> in your uh, pajamas. So thank you very much for that. Okay. Raise your hand if you got dressed for this event. Okay. We got a few people. Oh, sorry. I skipped that. Okay. Thank you for putting the effort, guys. I really appreciate it. To be honest, this is the first time I dress up for anything in maybe three weeks. So <laughs> I'm part of this group. Um, Okay, you can lower your hands.
Last question, raise your hand if you have ever procrastinated a goal or a task. Awesome. More hands, more hands. We love to see it. Yes, so this is the only one that's gotten almost everyone to, to raise their hand. Thank you so much for participating. You can all lower your hands now and then maybe use this now that you know how to do it. Um, if you haven't figured out, because I know there's a few people who haven't raised their hand for this question, so I'm assuming you do agree, but you haven't figured out how to use it. You just click on the participants bar on the bottom and then uh, a box should pop up. And at the bottom of that box should be a button that says raise hand just for next time. Uh, thank you all for participating. Okay, moving on. We always have to thank our global sponsors, our global partners. They have supported Creative Warnings all around the world. Um, Mailchimp is the first global partner who has supported Mail, uh, who has supported Creative Warnings for over twelve years now. Um, and this month, Mailchimp is kind enough to present twenty-five short films from the South by Southwest Festival. Uh, and it's it's a really fun festival that happened towards the end of March. And you. You can watch all the 25 short films that were nominated in the festival uh, by going to Mailchimp Presents. Uh, we will put all the links that you need in the chat if you're interested to watch after this event. Uh, our second uh, global partner is Basecamp and their new email platform, Hey. Uh, we've collaborated with Hey on a project called Hey Creative Mornings, and it's basically a virtual water cooler where you can go and discuss all your favorite topics from your favorite books to diff all kinds of different conversations are happening uh, in Hey Creative Warnings. We will also put the link to that. And if you're in the mood to have a little giggle, um, I actually haven't checked this out, but apparently Hey has this weird internet treasure uh, and it's hey.science slash giggle. Uh, we'll also put the link in the chat. Let us know in Instagram if you do visit this link and what it's about, because I still don't know what it's about. Our third global partner is Skillshare. Skillshare is a virtual, an online community uh, of creatives te can teach you all sorts of skills that you want to learn, uh, any crafts that you're interested to take up. Skillshare is a place to learn that. Um, you can also find some previous Creative Warning speakers who offer their own courses on Skillshare. So it's great to see our two worlds um, collide. Virtual Manifesto. So every month uh, we read out our virtual manifesto, but we also like to ask a volunteer to read it out for us. So if you would like to read out the virtual manifesto, I'll put the text up for you so you're not intimidated. Uh, there's still a few people who I think kept their hands raised from last time. So I'm gonna assume you don't wanna read it, but if you do, <laughs> please raise your hand again. Um, uh, so the text, it's very easy. We would love to hear your voice. Uh, so if you would like to read out the virtual manifesto, please raise your hand. Okay, Sara, uh, you can unmute yourself. I'm gonna unmute you. Hello. Hi. Hi, Sara. Hi. Um, okay. Everyone is creative. A creative life requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. We are here to support you, celebrate with you, and encourage you to make the things you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. <laughs> we believe in face-to-face -face connections, in learning from others, in jazz hands, virtual clubs, and virtual snaps. We bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose, confident that they will inspire one another and inspire change in neighborhoods and cities around the world. Everyone is welcome. I'm going to assume everyone clapped behind their muted microphones. Thank you, Sara. That was lovely. It was so nice to hear your voice. Um, Sara has been part of our Creative Mornings community for I don't know how long, but it's so nice to see that we have a group of people who are constantly supportive and constantly attending our events. So it's so nice to hear from you, Sara. Our theme of the month, procrastinates. Um, 
I, just funny story about procrastinate. It took us so long to find a similar word in Arabic to translate this word. Um, it was one of the most difficult themes that we had to translate because it, it carries so much meaning and weight that there isn't just one word to describe it. But we settled with one. I don't know if it does it justice, but I hope it didn't. So April theme is procrastinate. Our Turin chapter chose this theme. And this illustration that you see is by Elisa El Eliza Talentino, Elisa Eliza. The things that we perpetually push to tomorrow's to-do list can become a mental weight. Even though we know the welcome relief that will wash over us when the thing we're avoiding is complete. Still, we delay just a little while longer. In that game of waiting, waiting, waiting until it's almost too late, but not quite, a coiled spring of potential energy hides, ready to leap into action at a moment's notice. Narrowing a timeline can be a fruitful creative constraint an exercise in trusting the unknown. When a window of opportunity shrinks, improvisation and spontaneity might unfurl like a flower in a time-lapse video blooming at super speed, a confetti cannon of petals bursting in full color. Which brings me to our wonderful speaker of the month. She is a corporate lawyer turned trauma-informed life coach. She's passionate about helping people regulate their emotions so they can pursue their purpose, have healthier relationships, and improve their well-being. She's a self-professed lifelong learner with a master in law and currently completing an MSc in psychology and neuroscience of mental health. She's also certified in positive psychology and trained in somatic work. Please help me welcome our wonderful speaker of the month, Manal al Adoui. Welcome. I'm so excited to be here and to speak with you all and just honor that you're taking this time out of your Friday morning or for some of you um, Thursday night uh, to be here with me. Okay, nurse, shall I start my presentation? Yes, if you can share your screen and you have the floor. Okay. Okay, so as I said, really happy to be here. I'm gonna be talking about how to overcome procrastination and basically get into your creative flow. So obviously this is a creative community and everyone's creative. So let's see how we can work with procrastination to honor that creativity. A little about me, if you aren't already, you know, following me on Instagram or anything like that, my name's Minal and I basically, coach because I struggled with depression and later on anxiety for over a decade. And it was in my own journey, helping myself and healing from that, that I discovered that there was um, kind of like a gap that I could fill in terms of the knowledge and the skills that I could share with others. And I was really passionate about helping others who might have been in the same position as me. So I help people regulate their emotions through coaching, through group programs, through workshops. Um, I'm all about the emotions. It's my thing. Um, Okay, so as Noor said, I'm a lifelong learner. I also just call myself a nerd, big time nerd. So I'm always, you know, doing some kind of training program, some kind of uh, way of like increasing my knowledge. Um, I never stop studying. And I'm currently finishing my master's in psychology and neuroscience of mental health. So that's for now. We don't know what's next. We'll definitely be something next. <laughs> And I'm also the creator of a self-study online course, which is called Emotionally Empowered. So this is a course that basically teaches you how to regulate your emotions, how to overcome overthinking and basically stop struggling so much. Um, and also just a fun fact about me, I've never tried peanut butter because I shared this with my Instagram community like a week ago and they were like, what, how is that possible? But I'm a really picky eater. So there are a lot of common foods that you'd be surprised I've never tried, okay? So um, I'm also an ex-serial procrastinator. So I feel like I've been procrastinating my entire life. I'm a pro at procrastinating. Um, I've been procrastinating since school days. Um, I still procrastinate and it's okay because I found a way to deal with it, which is why I call myself an ex-serial procrastinator. So on the screen, you can see um, 
the picture uh, before of me as a lawyer. So I used to procrastinate a lot in my corporate job, but the difference was that there were deadlines. There were colleagues hassling me. There was a boss who was going to review me at the end of the year. So there were things that would get me to do the work. But then when I transitioned from my nine to five to basically running my own business online, um, I realized, well, no one's holding me accountable. There's no deadlines. I could literally procrastinate for the rest of my life. So I really had to figure out how do I get myself to do the things that I'm wanting, whether it's, you know, creating content for Instagram or creating my uh, programs or anything else. So it was really, really important for me to kind of like figure out this whole procrastination thing because I knew that it just wasn't going to work, especially if you have a business or you're working for yourself or you have like a creative project, right? Um, so I didn't say this at the start, but I do encourage you to comment, ask questions throughout, whether I'll be able to see it or not, but just be interactive in the chat. Highly recommend that. Okay, so to be clear, I did not overcome procrastination through time management or self-discipline because I think these are the very common um, kind of like ideas of what would help people stop procrastinating, but they're not what helped. And I think that when we even look at like time management, if time management really was your issue, you probably would have Googled it ages ago. You would have found out all these techniques and tips and tricks. You would have implemented them. And I don't think procrastination would be a problem anymore, but time management isn't the issue. It's, that's why it's not helping. It's not really about, do I have enough time or am I managing my time well? And it's also not about self-discipline, right? It's not about like controlling yourself or forcing yourself. And that's what I'm kind of going to go into a little more detail about now. So have you heard of the marshmallow test? So the marshmallow test is basically a research that was conducted by Stanford um, uh, researchers. And they basically took children who are between the ages of like three and six years old. They put them in a room and they gave them a marshmallow or a cookie or some kind of treat. And they told them, you can either have this right now or you can wait 15 minutes and we'll give you another treat, another marshmallow or another cookie. So you get more if you can wait. And this was basically testing their ability to wait for the reward, to wait for what they want, even if it's really frustrating to them. And what they found is that the kids who were able to wait for the next, the bigger treat, were actually more successful even 10 years later. So there is something to say about our ability to kind of like go through the frustration or go through the discomfort in order to have a reward or to have the relief that we're wanting. And it can be easy to think it's about forcing yourself or self-discipline. It can be easy for us to think, oh, so the kids who were able to kind of like control themselves or force themselves not to have it were able to wait the longest. But that's not it exactly, because it wasn't about which kids had the most self-discipline or could force themselves to wait. It was actually whether the kids knew how to handle the frustration of waiting, right? So they actually like, they, they looked at these kids and what were they doing in those 15 minutes or in that time that they were able to wait. And they found that some of them were like playing games with themselves. They were playing with their arms or legs. They were closing their eyes so they wouldn't see the treat. Um, one of them even fell asleep. Um, she took a nap. So <laughs> they were basically trying to deal with that frustration. Like how do I soothe myself or distract myself or occupy myself? so that I can get through this really difficult thing until I get my reward, my marshmallows or cookies. So our ability to wait for what we want really comes down to dealing with the discomfort, dealing with the uncomfortable feelings. And if you're wondering, okay, what does this have to do with procrastination? It's how do we deal with the discomfort that procrastination brings up for us? There, when we are procrastinating, there are certain types of discomfort or uncomfortable feelings that are coming up whether we realize it or not. And I'm basically going to share like three different types of discomfort that can come up for you when you're procrastinating. And I just want you to think like, which one applies to me? Which one feels like, yeah, you know, the last time I was procrastinating, that's what was going on, even if I didn't realize it, okay? So 
The first thing is the discomfort of actually doing the task. So we all know this. This is like, if I do the work, whether it's like an assignment, it, I don't want to do it. <laughs> you know, like maybe it helps me in the long term, but I don't enjoy doing it or it's hard or it's like I, I could be doing something funner, like watching a Netflix show or going out with my friends. Right. So there's that discomfort of actually doing the task itself. And then the second is the discomfort of not being able to do the task perfectly. So calling all perfectionists, perfectionists and perfectionism and procrastination are basically like twins. Um, because sometimes the uncomfortable feeling is even if I do this, it's not going to be good enough. Even if I do this, what if I fail? What if I can't do it properly? You know, what if I do accomplish it and then I get criticized because it's not, it's not good, right? So there's this discomfort about if I do this work or if I do this creative project or whatever else, and it doesn't turn out the way that I want it to, doesn't turn out to my standards, that's uncomfortable, right? Um, whether we notice that or not. Okay, cool. I'm seeing this is me in the chat. Cool. Okay. And then the final one is the discomfort of the results or consequence of actually getting the task done. So what do I mean by this? I can give you a quick example from my own like life. I love to do videos. Video is my thing. Like anyone who knows me, I've always loved doing videos. I enjoy it. It's easy for me, but there is something that makes me procrastinate when it comes to videos. So it's not the discomfort of doing it. It's not the discomfort. It's not going to be perfect, but it's the discomfort of once I create this video and I put it out to the world and I share it with everyone, it feels really vulnerable. It feels really uncomfortable to be seen that way or to be so um, open to judgment or open to criticism, etc. So that's what was making me uncomfortable was this idea that even if I get this done, even if I get this done really well, the results could be uncomfortable. So I hope that kind of resonates and I hope you can see how discomfort or uncomfortable emotions can come up at any point during procrastination. And I want to encourage you to be more attentive to it. Pay attention to the discomfort. So here's the thing, pushing ourselves or criticizing ourselves or punishing ourselves to kind of like do stuff like, why don't you just do it? I'm going to you know, take away this from you or whatever. And basically like disciplining ourselves like kids does not help us. It actually increases the procrastination. Why? Because it increases the discomfort, right? If you're being harsh on yourself, if you're criticizing yourself, labeling yourself like you're lazy or you never, never amount to anything because you just can't get stuff done or, you know, whatever else, you're increasing that discomfort and it becomes almost like really difficult for you to do the task, to do the work, to do creative because you're so uncomfortable now. It doesn't feel good, right? And when we feel good, we can do the things that we're wanting. So no, it's not about pushing yourself, criticizing or punishing. So let's talk about what it is or like how to overcome procrastination. And I'll basically share three easy steps. These are the steps that I literally go through every single time I do something that I'm not really comfortable doing or that I know I'm putting off. I always go through these steps. The first thing is just noticing how you feel. So the discomfort that we were just talking about, noticing it. What emotions are showing up in my body? Is it about the, doing the task? Is it about doing it perfectly? Is it about what the consequences might be if I get it done? But how do I feel? So sometimes I might feel like a lump in my throat. Sometimes I might feel a little shaky or sometimes I just feel like, maybe hot or like what is coming up for you as you think about doing this task and just noticing that the second thing is helping yourself through these emotions so as you guys know i help people regulate their emotions this is so important whether it's soothing yourself grounding yourself in some way relaxing whatever it is that helps support you to feel better to feel more calm to feel more centered to feel more grounded to feel more relaxed what are the things that you can do to work with these feelings? So I want you to notice that I didn't just notice how I feel and then just went for it and kept like trying to do it. I actually took the time to take care of those emotions, that discomfort. And then the final thing is do the smallest task you can do and then repeat. 
So do the smallest task that feels okay right now. Yep, I'm capable of doing that, whether it's just opening my book or opening, you know, something on my iPad to draw something or, you know, whatever it is, do the smallest task, then go back to the beginning, notice how you feel and see if there's something else you need to do or if you can continue to the next task. So it's kind of like small steps, but always honoring the discomfort or the uncomfortable emotions that might be coming up for you. Okay. And always show yourself compassion. So throughout this process, whatever it is that you're doing, it's really important that you're kind to yourself. It's really important that you're compassionate. So when we talked about like punishing or criticizing yourself or pushing yourself, that's not compassionate, right? Compassionate is one of the awesome ways that I really like to practice compassion when it comes to procrastination is just explaining to yourself why you're procrastinating. So for example, I'll say, you know, it makes sense that I'm procrastinating this right now because I'm really worried I'm not going to be able to do it. In the past, I haven't been able to do a task like this and it really sucked. So I'm worried this is going to happen again. So it makes sense. And I think anyone in my position would feel that way. So I want you to notice how that internal dialogue is very compassionate. And that's how you should be talking to yourself through the procrastination process. That's what's going to help you get through it and actually do the things you're wanting and honor your creativity. Because I think that pushing yourself or like criticizing and forcing yourself to do things really doesn't honor your creative flow. You know, at times, maybe the creativity doesn't want to come through in that way. But with compassion, we can honor the fact that, hey, I'm not feeling this right now. I think I want to go take care of my emotions or take care of myself. And maybe later my creative flow will be more like, you know, flowing. So there is a misconception, however, that compassion will make you soft. It'll make you complacent and then you won't get anything done. Like if I keep telling myself, oh, it's okay. Like I understand why you're procrastinating. It makes sense. You know, then I'm never going to get anything done. This is one of the most um, common objections that I get. Even when I tell people about compassion or I teach about compassion, it's, well, what if I end up doing nothing because I'm being so kind to myself, right? And I want you to know that I've tried this. It's not true. And the research actually says self-compassion is more motivating than self-punishment. So they've done plenty of research on students, on other people, and they've seen that actually the more compassionate people get more done. They're more productive than the ones who are critical or punish themselves. So self-compassion works. It's not going to make you complacent because when you're kind to yourself, you're actually more likely to do the things that serve you, to do the things that you know are gonna be good for you in the long term, right? Um, you're being kind to yourself. It doesn't mean that you're never gonna get anything done because you're being kind, you know? Okay. So instead of being critical towards yourself and saying things like, you know, I'm such a procrastinator, I used to say this all the time, or I'm lazy, I always do this, I'll never get it done, or any of these like critical thoughts, I want you to switch and just ask yourself, what do I need right now? What would help me right now? Maybe what kind of support do I need? What would help me soothe my emotions? What would help me relax? What would help me feel better, right? Just asking yourself this question, which is super basic, but see what comes up for you. And this again is how we honor our creative flow because we, we are listening to that part of ourselves that wants to be creative. And we're asking, what do you need right now for me to support you in being creative, right? And finally, regardless of everything that I've said, embracing procrastination could be what you need. You know, there are times when procrastination is what you need. Maybe this is not the time to do it. And we don't have to, you know, beat ourselves up about that. So um, I remember once I was working on a, a presentation for one of my group programs and my friend was like, um, oh, you're working on it today and like the program's tomorrow. And I was like, yeah, you know me, I always procrastinate. I don't know why I do this. And she was like, but it's working for you, you know, like. You, you do procrastinate a lot, but it always works and you always get it done and it's always great. So what's the big deal? And it was such a shift in perspective for me. It just completely changed the way that I see things. So now I can allow myself to do something the day before or two days before, and I don't have to feel bad about it. 
I don't have to, you know, make myself feel like something's wrong or I'm doing something wrong, but rather just saying, this is my process. You know, I'm honoring the way that feels good to me, the way that works for me. So maybe even just the fact that we label it procrastination isn't useful. And maybe if we just label it as this is my creative flow, that can help us as well. And that's a more compassionate approach, right? Okay, so what I hope you're taking away from today's talk first is that procrastination, it's all about the emotions. It's all about the discomfort. So if you want to overcome procrastination, you need to look into what is this discomfort? How is it showing up? And how do I deal with it? How do I take care of those emotions? Then replace self-discipline with self-compassion. Don't worry, it's not gonna make you soft. You're gonna get stuff done, it works. Um, so instead of being harsh on yourself, be kind to yourself. And finally, embrace the procrastination. If that's what works for you, embrace it and it's okay. And don't feel guilty about it. Ooh, okay, so thank you. Um, I, I really loved sharing with you guys. Um, and you can connect with me on Instagram. That's where I usually am. That's where I'm the most active. So feel free to follow me there or send me, you know, comments you had on the presentation later. That's fine too. Um, so I'll stop the share. Okay. Thank you so much, Nina. That was wonderful. We're going to open the floor for questions. So if you have any questions, you can click on raise hand or ask them in the chats. As we're waiting for people to think of questions, I want to ask you a question. You spoke before on how it's very different to work in an environment where you have deadlines, where you have someone who's keeping you accountable versus something that you're doing on your own, like your own business or your own projects. Um, and I always use this term of, I work well under pressure. And that's, I think it's another way to say that I leave things to the very last minutes. But how do you, create that environment when you don't really have someone asking for you to do something? That's actually a really good question because like you said, this whole idea of like, I work well under pressure. So what I found in working for myself is I needed pressure. So I needed to kind of create that pressure for myself. So one of the things I do, this is a secret, but I will, I will like say I'm doing a workshop tomorrow and I have not prepared anything. But why? Because it creates pressure. So I'm creating these deadlines for myself. So if you're a business owner, you, you're doing creative work, whatever it is, try to create deadlines for yourself. So for example, if you want to present your artwork in like a gallery, go to the gallery and be like, hey, I, can I present in a month? Even though you haven't started, if you know that, hey, that month is going to create the pressure for me and I'm going to create it. But obviously, like, give yourself enough time because, again, we want to honor the creative flow. We don't want to feel so pressured that we're just doing work, like, really fast and it's not really, you know, up to our standards. But I take my... Awesome. Thank you so much. Does anyone else have any questions? If you want to ask it in the chat, if you want to raise your hand, if you have a comment you want to speak up, share your thoughts. Um, I know it usually takes time for people to think of something. Okay, we have Sara. Sara, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, so it's not really related to procrastination, but it's about feelings um, and emotions. So lately I've noticed on social media that people use this as mantras that I am not my feelings, I am not my emotions. So I just want to know what are your thoughts about that? Sure. Okay. So actually a really helpful thing for us to kind of see our emotions for what they are is to realize that they're just a part of us. So they're not the whole of us. So I think what people are trying to do with this whole mantra of like, I'm not my feelings is basically say, I'm not all of that feeling. Like I'm not just sad. I'm not just angry there's a part of me that, that is sad. There's a part of me that's angry. When you create this detachment or like space from your feelings, it's much easier for you to deal with them. It's much easier for me to deal with a part of me being sad than the whole of me being sad, right? So I think that's the idea behind it. We have a question in the chat from Sharifa. Um, Sharifa is asking if you could repeat 
why we procrastinate or the reasons for procrastination? Okay, so the, the reason we procrastinate is the discomfort that it brings up. So if doing the task or, you know, the thought of doing it imperfectly or whatever else feels really icky to me, like it brings up uncomfortable feelings, I think it's very human that I'm not going to want to do it, right? We all are striving to feel good. It's just like a human instinct. I want to feel good, which is why I would rather go watch Netflix than do my assignments. So that's, that's the essential reason why we procrastinate. Um, it's because it, it's uncomfortable. Um, there's, this, there's a question from Kelly and Jimmy. Uh, any suggestion for explaining this approach to people that are judging you as procrastinating, what they see as lazy? Mm, that's very interesting. I mean, I, I always like to say, you know, people will judge, people will say what they say. But the question is, are you internalizing that? Are you saying that to yourself? So, you know, stay strong in your own self-compassion, stay strong in your own conviction that, you know, procrastination is working for me or I'm not procrastinating, this is just my flow. Um, so that whether people see that as lazy or not, it really doesn't impact me. That's my suggestion. Thank you so much. Um, Jihan uh, is, uh, wrote a comment that says, procrastination is a topic that is generally looked upon, so it automatically makes me look back negatively on myself. And although I do, I do want to get the work done, I found that the fear stops me from doing it. How do I manage to get out of a situation like this? Yeah, so I think what Jahan's saying is very similar to what Kelly's saying in that usually people would judge procrastination usually people would look down upon procrastination. So I think that to some extent, maybe it's this like radical idea that, hey, maybe procrastination is not that bad, which is why we're having this conversation right now, right? Um, but Jahan is also asking, if the fear is keeping me from doing it, how do I manage to get out of a situation like this? So recognizing that fear is the discomfort we're talking about. Fear is that uncomfortable emotion. And of course, if you're afraid of something, you're not gonna run towards it, right? You're gonna run away from it. That makes sense. So in the same way that we covered those three steps, notice what you feel, so you're feeling fear. Now, what can you do to help yourself work through this fear? Are there things that can help support you? Like maybe talking to a friend about it or going for a walk um, or you know, doing some exercise that feels supportive to you. How do I work through this fear and help myself feel a little more calm a little more, um, you know, confident and not so afraid. Um, and then take a small step. So don't do the whole thing, but see what's a small step that I'm not so afraid to do that I can start with. Um, some people seeing me procrastinate gets anxious. So I need to also calm people's anxiety about my process. Um, so that's a comment from Kenny and Jimmy. Uh, if there's any other questions, comments, anyone wants to speak their mind. Otherwise, Manal, do you have any final thoughts before we close off the session? Mm, well, not many final thoughts. It was just really nice to share this perspective. Um, and I think that it's something that I hope everyone takes away is that sometimes just seeing things differently is what we need. So maybe sometimes it's not really about like getting rid of procrastination entirely but just see it differently. See it as it's not the worst thing and maybe you've looked down upon it for so long, but maybe it works for you, you know? Um, so yeah, and thank you everyone for the comments in the chat. I really, really appreciate it. I'm glad that you enjoyed the talk. Um, I just wanna see if there's any question I might've missed. I think we've covered it. Thank you, Manal, so much. I would also like to thank our local sponsors, um, Production and the Ministry of uh, Culture, Youth and Sports. Uh, thank you all for joining us. If you wanna know when our next event is gonna be, follow us on Instagram or, twi or Twitter at CM underscore Musbat. Thanks again, Manal. This was a really wonderful and a really great start to the month. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. Have a good weekend. And Ramadan Kareem.